Um, everybody likes our podcast in our friend group. My friends don't know I'm doing this. They definitely know. They know. Um, I'm ashamed. You're not ashamed. You love it. You're thriving. Look at you. You showered. You're ready. Hi, welcome to Steak Talk. I'm Steak. This is husband Jason. That's producer Jason. You smell nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, producer Jason said we got to talk about Gypsy Rose. I mean, we don't have to, but. I don't know much about Gypsy Rose, but I don't like child abuse. True. She uh-huh. was abused. She That's was abused. The The controversy is that. Um, I don't like cops either. Yeah. She uh, <laughs> she got uh, someone who has. I don't like the prism, uh, prison industrial system. complex either. Yeah. Good things to stand for, Jay. Thank Good job. You. Your crowd favorite. Yeah. You go. Yeah. You go. She got someone who has autism to kill her mother who was abusing her. Seems awful. Yeah. Terrible. Seems bad. <laughs> what, yeah. should, what do you want to say about that? I don't know. This Jip person said it's a hot I saw some funny memes list. of so she, her like thriving. And yeah, I mean, she's, thriving. she's yeah, thriving. Yeah, she got out of jail after like 12 years or something. And now she's thriving <clears> and like be getting a lot of. She's basically becoming an influencer very quickly, it seems. I hope that works out for her. I know some influencers that <laughs> had child abuse that. It's not working out for them. <laughs> no, the thing that me. the thing that I'm more interested in is um, I and I also have not looked into it, uh, but the rapper Viper um, was just charged with kidnapping, and apparently he held a woman hostage in his house for five years. Or, five years? Yeah, Yikes. and I definitely went and saw him perform in that five years in the last year being like this is so sick viper's playing a show and uh he had someone chained in a basement somewhere wait for- what yeah i didn't even heard this oh my god well he he's famously known for the album y'all blank don't y'all don't even really smoke crack or yeah something. yeah oh so he's yeah what, his dick he, is on the cover or something no it's just his face on the cover but <laughs> oh, there's something else about that whoops <laughs> But uh, he has some crazy songs. He's like that underground. I think he's from Houston, but uh, underground, like Memphis devil shit type music that was very popular in their um, late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, he had that one album that it kind of went viral a few years ago, just like resurgence of people interested in it because of. It had such a catchy title that people didn't actually smoke crack like him. And, uh, well, he didn't perform for many years, I'm pretty sure. Um, he There was a big lapse in his career. Then he had that viral, viral yeah. moment and came back out. I was like, I'm definitely going to see this. Um, he played with uh, another... I think I think I saw him with the band Scourge, but uh, he definitely had a crack pipe on stage. It was cool, and now it turns out he was uh, yeah. holding someone hostage. And I feel like which we have that hostage situation we had here. What in Tahunga. Oh, that one there where the person was screaming. Yeah, we talked about that on another podcast. Oh, we did. Um. Uh. You know, and I feel like like that's a thing that like parents are very worried about is like the lyrics could be real or the lyrics could make you. But I, you know, a lot. Are you of, condemning rap music right now? Absolutely. You famously love rap. Music. I know, and I was, I was gonna say like a lot of rap music is just that's for a big the, thing right now. The shock value, and it's not real. And then some is real, and then some is apparently you're smoking crack and you have a woman tied in your basement. Mm-hmm. Which is that's not just rap music though. That's all music. A lot of music has aggressive lyrics but pretty crazy that's fucking crazy i didn't know that thank you for telling me there's a whole like class of uh terrible person that likes putting people in the basement it's like a basement guy <laughs> it's not common in the crack community is it what like, just like the <laughs> Why desire are you asking to p- about the crack community <laughs> well just the desire to well you said that cool people smoke crack obviously now not all people who smoke crack are cool 
Uh, I but, mean, you yeah, know, what not is, all people. I never said all people who smoke crack are cool. My best friend, a guy I got sober with, we always talk. Like, we have a hard time relating to people who haven't smoked crack. <laughs> and I've always thought, like, people who have are kind of cooler. But there's no desire that comes to tie people up and put them in a basement. Um, somewhere. there might. I think there might be some overlap. There, there's definitely like wanting to be in basements. There's definitely like wanting to be tied up. <laughs> there's definitely like thinking. There's definitely locking yourself in a house. Like peering through windows mm-hmm. is very um, synonymous with crack smoking. Mm, like that painting. That but it sounds like the rapper Viper uh, like got some things mixed up <laughs> and he combined a few of the, I'm the wondering uh, if, traits in a less favorable fashion. Do you think yeah. you already have those traits within you prior to smoking crack or do you think the crack brings it out? Uh, or do you think the crack creates it? I guess I definitely think uh, prolonged drug use can create p- create psychosis that can cause you to do things that you maybe wouldn't normally do. Valid. But also, there's an argument that people who are less stable and are prone to doing more violent things are more prone to drug use. So Valid. who knows? Chicken or the egg? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Why like, can't we the separate the art from the artist and still listen to Viper? <laughs> I always say you can. Yeah. But, yeah. And if you really feel bad about it, just pirate well, actually, music. Well, actually, it's very similar to that. What is it? The What what metal band? The, Mayhem? No, Mayhem? No, no, not that Dissection, one. Dissection. The, the, Inquisition. Recently, recently. The Who? Inquisition is a band that the guy got accused of, like, pedophilia no the Ew. it was like uh cannibal corpse no there, there was one the a florida guy stop who recently got <laughs> arrested for uh cutting heads off or something or like having well, cutting In heads a off band? yeah threatening decapitation cattle decapitation it was not there was just the band i think decapitation is a band that got accused of cattle the decapitation band, did the, not get the, i toured with cattle decapitation the no lead one singer in there of the band is like yeah it's not cattle decapitation what is it uh, what is it i was right it was cannibal corpse sorry it was florida and he lives in florida he's not from there what do you mean it's cool he he just had weapons and skulls it wasn't like he was a bad person he may not have made the skulls. Yeah, I exactly. think a lot of people in Florida probably have weapons. Supreme and skulls. just released a skull. You know, like come on, he probably just had the Supreme Edition a human skull. skulls. Yeah, that checks out. For Supreme, him. they released the actual human skull, or like no. a, I, I was, was drinking skull. in Austin, Texas, um, at one time, and I was. That's uh, cool, babe. Weird flex, but okay, let's. Thank you, let's but keep I saw real. this guy walking saw, into an oyster restaurant. You saw. They can and we corpse went, render? yeah, and we yeah. went in to see him up close, and they right. didn't want to see us because we were drunk. The, this podcast is tanking. Is it tanking? You're Why? talking about That's people you've concept. seen walking into an oyster restaurant. Yes, and I went in as well and got barred from the restaurant. From they wouldn't seat us because we were too drunk. We smelled like tequila, and they were like, "You can't go sit and look at the weird guy who apparently had skulls in his basement." Was he carrying or anything? What was he carrying or anything? Probably everyone in Texas. In Texas, that's the whole reason you go to Texas. I think is to have your weapons on you. Well, that might be relevant. You know, I was um, I went on a trip to. uh, uh, So not everything good comes out of Florida. Some bad things are in Florida. There are some yucky. Yeah, almost definitely. But some bad things come out of everywhere. Thank you. Um, Also, he's not from Florida. He just lived there. Um. One time I went to Anchorage. Do you think he went to Florida to do bad things because he felt like he would be more accepted there? Chicken or the egg, right? That's true. Thank you. Well, I'm asking you. Does Florida <laughs> make, does Florida make it the question. man or does the does man Florida make it Florida? Does Florida create the badness or is it just... That isn't what I asked. I asked, do you think he went there because he felt it. like his bad behavior would be accepted there? Yes. But I think that he could probably make people act up. They I get know, frustrated, they get angry. They I know a lot of people definitely move to Florida to do Be, bad things. Well, yes. I mean, there's no, yes, of course. Mostly just drink alcohol. Yes. It's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. But in a bad way. You do it. In the, the tall cups. Oh, <laughs> like slushies? The, the, the Vegas the slushies? Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. 
Um, one time I went to Anchorage, Alaska, and then went to other Alaskan towns. And speaking of carrying weapons, a lot of the bars there, you have to check your gun as you're walking in. It's in like there's a little gun basket. And so there's just, just a pile of guns. Whoa. Pretty I went to crazy. school in rural North Carolina. And I remember during like the height of some gun debate era, there was a hog farmer that was in one of my classes and he talked about like, I have to have an AK 47 because there's wild boars on my property and a regular handgun will not stop them. And he did was we like, talk about this? The wild boars are crazy. I feel like we have, you have to, I don't know if like, it's on camera though. What do you mean? I don't know if you've boars told are us. dangerous. Boars are you, seems like scary. you do need a gun. I feel like we should talk about how dangerous boars are in every episode. If we haven't, um, what was that thing? That, that it was like, and there's 20 wild boars. It was like something on the internet. It was like a meme. Do you know it? No. Come on. So, there was, though. There was. So what do you know? I don't know. Ooh, I, just, I tried boars. to save you buffalo chips. That was from the last episode. Oh. It says I tried to save you, which is much more heavy <laughs> sounding than They're I scary, forgot though. to write buffalo chips. I feel like a boar would just absolutely fuck up your legs because no, they're so low to the ground with the tusks. They'll, yeah, they'll disembowel you. They go they for your chest. They ch- tusk them. your chest. Or will fuck you up. It's like, a you know, more people die from hippopotamus attacks than lion attacks. Yeah, that's classic. Yeah, exactly. That's classic it's fun the same fact. thing. Boars are crazy. Yeah. They're aggressive. The boars in Florida, big thing to do in my high school is to go uh, boar hunting uh, because they're invasive. They breed crazy fast, and there's tons of them. The piglets are cute, but everybody goes boar hunting down there. And Did um, you go boar hunting? I've been in the truck while people are boar Did hunting, but I have boars? not shot a boar myself. Mm. Um, my dad, big boar hunter guy, but... Uh, you know, the, the gas stations down there often have boars heads on them. Like, just sitting just, there? No, like like mounted onto the walls. It's a very like popular like Everglades decor item is the is if crazy. you display the boars that you've caught. It's no, like they're safari. fucked Safari. Well, also because it's like grassland out there, so you can see hella far. Yeah. Um and and you can see the packs of them running across the when you're driving on the freeway. It's crazy. You well, know, it's not a freeway. It's like a county road that I'm thinking of. I'm not like we got to have guns. Although, you know, they can be aesthetically cool. But like some animals, sometimes it just seems like boars are one of those situations. You where shouldn't you be walking I was, uh, around in the Everglades acres without a gun. Yeah. in East Hollywood uh, two days ago. And the security guard there had a gold handgun that was engraved it was very cool that's aesthetically cool that yeah. is very cool lacy acres security guard <laughs> yeah. lacy acres is like a um, organic grocery store yeah and uh, before you guys think we're crazy conservatives for saying this or something or gun nuts a lot of museums have firearms from history and firearms have always been a, a work of art and a source of aesthetic inspiration I don't care what people think. Actually, that was one of the things that, <laughs> I was like, where are we going with this? Uh, that Sorry. I enjoyed from the comment section. I saw someone said they also don't hate me. So there's two people out there that don't hate me. And they said, I appreciate your I don't give a fuck attitude. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think is most important, baby, is that I don't hate you. So, But you tell me daily you do. <laughs> well, but it's for another conversation with our therapist. <laughs> um, oh, speaking of animals, I wrote on my list it would be funny if you did the thing, but don't tell them where we're going with it. But remember that thing when, that when we were first uh dating and it was and you were like what animal would you be and what yeah but you have to ask someone well ask me and then we'll fake it or we'll ask jason uh, okay. this is a cool thing that Jay, that my jason showed me and i thought it would be a fun game to play i think it's it's just what is your favorite animal it's really hard I've always liked ants. I think they're cool. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's interesting. They've got whole societies. They build stuff. I'm going to write this down yeah. for you. Ants. Well, well, it's only two questions, so we'll okay, probably be able to re- we'll probably be able to remember. But why? Uh, what are the qualities of the ant that you like? Industrious, civilized, and um, they know their role. Okay. <laughs> and what is your second favorite animal? Uh, I haven't really thought about it. I don't know. Eagles are cool. They fly. They're apex predators. <laughs> and uh, 
they can even fly in, in place and hover like a helicopter. <laughs> Where are you going? Where's the catch? Is it supposed to lead to so, some incredible thing? So, apparently, with the it's a psychological test, and the number one animal that you chose is how you view yourself in a relationship. So industrious, civilized, and knowing your role. <laughs> That's and, pretty good. And number two is how you view your idealized partner. So fiance Rachel is an apex predator. <laughs> <laughs> she could fly and she hovers in space. She's like a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I've always wanted for my girls, just kind of highly mobile and air, airborne. Yeah. I just like that you were civilized, industrious, and know your role, because I do feel like that's you in the on the podcast as a producer. Yeah, I do like the sort of militant qualities of the ant, and that they like literally go to war to each, with each other, and like, you know, produ- podcast production is kind of like a war itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the front lines. And especially of film production. Mine yeah. was um, a stingray. That was my favorite animal, a stingray. I was like blown away by this. And it was like, this. they're just beautiful. I think they're beautiful. And they're set up, like, they're free. And they're just like flying in the ocean. And they're like silky. Killed Steve Irwin. That is debatable. That's a hot take by me, is I don't think that's real. You think it was a conspiracy? Uh-huh. I do. I've been around a lot of stingrays. I love stingrays. I'm from the Gulf side of Florida. We have like the big cow ray migration. Mm -hmm. Something I grew up doing was walking out into the middle of thousands of cow rays, uh, just watching them like fly all around you. My dad and I would debarb stingrays when you caught them on the pier, which is actually controversial in itself because it is like a, a way for them to protect themselves from predators where there aren't many predators on the Gulf coast and debarbing them kept the stingrays safe because people were like less scared if they knew there were a bunch of debarbed stingrays in that area. So they wouldn't kill them. Mm -hmm. So, so what what happened was you were debarbing all the stingrays and then Steve Irwin Got the luck of the draw. And Here's got, the thing. Here's got the, the one, the one last one you and your dad didn't get to that had a <laughs> yeah, barb. Left. That's what I'm saying. We've debarbed them all. So well, I think people it. say that it was a freak accident, right? It, okay, so it if wasn't you like know, a normal thing okay, that would happen. The barb on a stingray, ray, but he was needs doing weird pressure shit. Pressure right? to be <laughs> like it's basically like a thorn, this is right? Weird with the and it, it's not at the end. A lot of people think it's at the end of their tail, but it's actually right at the top of their tail where it connects to the body. Mm -hmm. So you have to press down or go to eat the animal to be barbed by it. Now, imagine I just walk up to you and I like jam a thorn into your heart from my back. Like that doesn't make any sense. Did you ever watch Steve Irwin? I just don't like think this whole, is the I, way. I never watched it much, but his whole thing was like jumping on them and applying right. pressure. That's true. Well, then he killed Crocodile himself. Hunter. I think that's he killed what himself every, on the stingray. I think that's what everyone thinks. Jason that's, said the stingray killed Steve Irwin, but Steve Irwin killed himself but I mean, on the stingray. Everyone, mm, I think that the would be co- most common belief with that. We'll that, see in th- the comments. Can I finish? You? Yes, I'm <laughs> agreeing with you. Like <laughs> the whole thing is that he was an idiot that was always pl- <laughs> jumping on animals, and one got him. Eventually, he was like, it get wasn't it. like stingrays are bad. It was just Steve I've, Irwin was an idiot. Just I think. Stupid guy. Yeah. I don't know if I've heard that take. I think that's everyone's take. Okay, I would think I was feeling overly. Who defensive. have you ever been like Steve Irwin was a god, and those stingrays got to him? No one. A lot of people. Okay. Really. When I grew up, that happened when I was in sixth grade. People were hard. People thought it was tragic, but people, everyone was like, makes sense. I mean, I, no I one was that. crying. No one was crying over Steve or Irwin. Even the Irwin family was well, like, kind of makes sense. He jumped on alligators every day. I guess he was kind of like jackass for animals. Yeah. Like people were. It was only a matter of time. It was so. tragic, but like. He was beloved. He definitely was beloved. Yeah, he was beloved. That's why it was tragic. But he was also an idiot. I have not seen that take, but I appreciate it. That is it. everyone's take. That's why there's memes about I it to this day. I appreciate it because I always thought people were very How many memes do you see about Kobe Bryant? None, because that was tragic, beloved, and it was an accident. Right. How many memes do you see about Steve Irwin? 
countless because it was he was dumb. But people think it's like heroic stupidity. I don't think people think no it's stupid. They're like heroic. No, let's take a poll. No one thinks Steve Irwin was a hero. He was on the animal was, planet and he jumped. On, people thought he was a joke. No one takes. I think people thought he was a conservationist and was slaughtered by a stingray. Yeah, no, he was doing no. it trying to bring awareness to the animals but you're yes I think you i'm got not saying he was an evil person i'm saying people I no this was one, my hot tag but it turns out it's jason's hot no tag. one no but it's just like no one thinks the stingray was bad good to know like liz like we'll take a poll but like i would like to oh, take nobody, i don't think anybody thinks the stingray is bad yeah. it's not a villain stingray thank yeah, you i think it's very i'm also fiercely defensive of the stingray because like the Right, Quiz so, goes. I, so am the sting, I am the stingray. So that that yeah, whole okay. submarine thing that That's happened true. recently, the whole submarine thing that happened last year, where the people, the billionaires, went down, and the oh yeah, how yeah. many people were like, oh my god, the ocean's terrible. Like this is <laughs> like it was tragic. People felt bad for the people who lost who loved ones, but it was also like. Okay. You went you down there it. with a you Nintendo controller. Yeah. That right. kind of is to be expected. Yeah, they were asking for it. Eventually, something's going to get You're right. Anyways. What animals are you? Wait, I want to tell you which one. Now, well, here's animal. my second right, animal. Right. Mine was a tiger. And because they were big, scary, and beautiful. Wow. And so, what about... And look what I... Fierce. Not scary. Fierce. Big, fierce, beautiful. Is your number one a tiger? No, mine, I yourself? think I'm pretty sure mine was dog. And hippo. And the second was hippopotamus because I liked a uh, crazy. I liked that they were crazy, um, <laughs> vicious, and had a big butt. Nice. <laughs> and they were kind of funny, you said. Something was like kind of funny about the way they looked. I don't or something. think. I don't, I you don't think, think that's funny? Any, you said it on the last podcast, I never said and I'm holding on to it. it. They are objectively funny. kind of a funny animal. I, I think you are funny. Thank you. I also don't think you look like a hippopotamus. I am scared of you, <laughs> and I do like your butt. He's like, your butt could be bigger, like hippos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what's the dog? Everyone knows what the characteristics of a dog are. I know, are. but you could like give it for fun. We have a lot of airtime here. Loyal, loving, fun, Obedient. whatever. Yeah. Cute. No, yeah, whatever. It's Look at Udi, she's cute. Yeah. What kind of dog would you be? It's true. We get dogs. That's true. There are different I mean, types. Everyone of dogs. says it. I would be like Punk. He's a bull terrier. I look, everyone says I look just like my dog and you just do. like my baby. Mm. Yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, I like kinda me. Crazy. I like me. I like you too. You know, if we have another baby, do you think it's gonna look like me? I hope so. <laughs> you want one that looks like me? I want them to have your characteristics. I would much prefer. Uh, much prefer your looks than your mental. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Rude. Just kidding. I'm working on my mental health. It is a long work in progress, you know? And it's amazing to watch. I love living this life with you. Thank you, baby. Um, Now all my notes say ants. Oh. Which actually, that's one of my notes. And I actually texted you about it this morning. And Wait, I the think, really nice thing? Um. What I just said that I love living this life with you is sincerity. And I sincerity makes me very uncomfortable because, uh, you know, I've always I've gone through a lot of trauma in my life. And if I express how I really feel and show someone how I genuinely am, I've gotten into a place in my life where I find cynicism and humor as a way to like at a very early age, like I was a chubby kid or like I was, you know, if I can make fun of something before you make fun of it, then everything would be okay. Because then I, I was in on the joke rather than being the punchline of a joke. And so cynicism has been uh, a, a crutch my entire life. And I've realized in our relationship that sometimes you need sincerity and uh that is something i'm working on because i am like the perfect partner and it's a stretch to find things for me to work on but that's one thing that uh i can absolutely work on is sincerity you know what i think is very and i think the comment section (laughs) don't realize that cynicism and uh satire and humor is irony is actually like a good thing (laughs) (laughs) you know what i think is really like it 
like mind blowing to me about you as a partner is you sent me that this morning it, during a very, I woke up to that cause you were already at the gym for three hours and I sleep in. That was, well, let's just make, let them believe. What? It was at eight forty four. Yeah. But I, the thing was we've, we're recording two episodes this morning I oh. just want people to think that every day I'm at the gym for three hours in the morning. Oh, because you don't want them to compare your progress. Well, no, it's just like I want. I was going to be honest and say that that it was the same, but it's two different days. Who cares? <laughs> Go ahead. Like, uh, so something about you that's always surprising to me is like you sent me that in a very tender. I woke up to it this morning, and I felt really like. Well, what I responded to you is like, I think oftentimes like you understand me more than I understand myself and we get like, I, because you are an actions person and I'm a words person and it's like, you do like saying things. sometimes you're, you're right. Like you were, you're totally right. Oh, I'm trying to like, like thread it all together, but you're totally right. It, it like, you understand me more than I understand myself sometimes. And like feeling when, when a partner can do that, it's like, so like, you're like, Oh, you do get it. You know, like you do see it from my side. And I I think what, what I'm trying to say is like, what's so outstanding about you is that like where I think that that's like, just like, Oh my God, like I, I screenshot that, you know, to save it, but you're not afraid to say those things in front of other people. And I feel like that's like such a, I don't I have know. a, I don't give a fuck attitude, you know, <laughs> but that's, a, that's like, that's so cool. Book. Everyone's always so guarded about the things they need to change about themselves or, or like relationship stuff, which is a big thing about this podcast is like, we're just on here recording our day. Like, yeah, but I don't have much to change about myself. So like, <laughs> I'll just I know, I know. See, this is the cynicism. This is the satire. This is the <laughs> irony. This is the fun. <laughs> this is, this the, is the, fun. the good. Yeah, you know? He's a fun guy. He's a fun, yeah. sarcastic guy. We all know, but it is, it's, it's that this podcast is us just like it is us recording multiple episodes in, in one day and like we don't it's not scripted it's not like you this know off, meant to do off the a, cuff, it's very know? off the cuff you know and like we don't have a goal with it and I think like just being open and honest about the relationship stuff that like everyone is going everyone goes through shit like this you know and I think that that's cool that you are so willing to talk about things like that you know I don't know because you what do else it. are we going to talk about I don't you know. You seeing a guy walk into an oyster bar? Like, come on. Like, we can't talk about that for an hour. Not I yet. know, I know, but I don't know. Anyways, you're special. Yeah. I love you. Um, I want to get similar tattoos to you because they look cool and I want to look cool too. Yeah. So you can get similar tattoos, but don't get the exact same ones. I have a lot of terrible tattoos. No, no. I just want to do something with the tattoo on my foot because I don't identify with it. Um Your feet are perfect, baby. <laughs> See, that was one of those classic Jason. Classic um, Jason moves. Um, Bunny the dog. Do you guys know about Bunny the dog? Nope. No. Bunny the dog. Uh, was it? A, okay. I don't care about animals. Ryan, Instagram. you're one of your best friends. Uh, gifted us the buttons that the dogs can talk to you on, and we never hooked it up. I think it's in a box somewhere. Sorry. Um, we need to hook that up. But uh. The buttons that you push on and the dog says words. Bunny the dog was like the first dog that went viral for um, using these buttons and has a lot of followers. The dog, are you seeing? I, I know you're looking it up. The, the dog, dog talks, they say. It talks. And it, and it basically got, it's a doodle or something. And it got so evolved with its conversing that it became self-aware. And now they had to put on antidepressants. Mm, this sounds fake. No, nope, look Definitely it up. fake. No, it's like it. There's I mean, a, a video lot of, people, of it. They put dogs on Xanax. And I so, know, but the dog asked, "Why right, was it a dog?" If you're making why Instagram accounts for your dog and teaching it to talk and doing all that, then of course you're going to put your dog on medicine. Like that's a. That's just, I think the dog became self-aware and it was wondering. Dogs if, are self-aware. Dogs know they exist. Yes, but they don't know they're dogs. Yes, they do. They they definitely know the. You think Udi thinks that she's not one of us? Yes, Udi definitely knows that she's not one of us. How do you know? You she's, think she's a human? She thinks she's a. Then why doesn't she do the things that we do? She elects not to. Because <laughs> she's not a human. 
That's yeah, maybe factual. Do, what, do we I'll have any in, information? It looks about like bunny? scientists are kind of looking into it. Yeah, uh, the dog has provoked. Scientists uh, are bored. <laughs> They're no, learning to use they've buttons. They've solved global warming, and now they're just like with the paper cured, straws. Cured cancer, solved global warming. Now they're looking at Bunny the dog's depression. Yeah, and okay. Self awareness. So, so basically, what happens is it it like hits buttons depending on what it wants to express, which is kind of like I think this thing that smart monkeys were doing for like years, mm-hmm. and scientists are trying to see how legit it is. But I don't know. I've always assumed dogs and animals just kind of. Less, I mean, dogs aren't that smart, despite what we think. They're not like yeah. among the smartest animals. No, no, they're no. Not you know, very squid social. are actually cuttlefish are one of the smartest. And they can learn how. Yeah, I think what you meant by self-aware, like dogs, don't think of themselves as like they they're more instinctual. They're not like analy- They're in, not analytical. They yeah. don't. They just do. And I think Bunny became, why am I a dog? I think it said, why dog? And then who's no. that? And then went and looked in the mirror. Who's That's that? Whoa. It did that. It, there's a video of it. Who's that? And then it looked itself in the mirror. It yeah, also, but like, you could just, that could have been, I, I want treat. Yeah, you know? maybe, but. You never know. It's cool. It would be cool to think of. You know, cuddlefish. But I think they're just little robots. In the squid family, are you can train them all the same commands as a dog. Do you have Instagram accounts for your dogs? There is an Instagram account for my dogs, but I do not own it or run it. <laughs> I don't. I don't even have the login. It's a fan page. It's a fan page for the dogs wow. run by Ruthless and Hannah. Oh, okay, okay. So. That's like, yeah. My girl, my fiance's sister runs the account of our cat. Yeah, there seems a, to be a pattern. There's a Primo and Valentine fan page run by a couple Where of Where were they last night? I don't know. We need tracking. Call. I want to get those tracking <laughs> callers for them. Primo came home. He's a good boy. Or we just don't hire people that, that will leave the, the gate, gate open. open. True. Fact. Or just watch after the people that we have working. Yeah, I rushed out the door. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. My fault. It's okay. We did get our dogs back. And now everyone on next door knows my phone number. <laughs> so because I posted that everywhere. Um Losing your dogs is like one of the worst feelings. Yeah, I, very anxiety inducing, right? Jason, I was not anxious at all. He is I was, calm doesn't give that. a fuck. I, I honestly, I was like, we had a good run. I felt so like <laughs> Val. Um, two of our dogs got out. Val is mostly wild animal, anyways. He's the best behaved dog. He's the easiest to take care of. Um, aside from him wanting to like run the hills, he just likes to chase animals. Uh, but I was like, he's gonna be fine. He's just gonna go back to hit. He'll probably join a pack of coyotes and just live life. Punk, the little bull terrier, he got out with Val and he's an idiot. And I was like, he is gonna get run over by a car and that's gonna be sad, but I'll get through it. But <laughs> like, I was just like, honestly, we have, too, dogs. we have too many dogs. <laughs> I was wondering if you were feeling that. <laughs> and I mean, I didn't want to lose them. I love them and I was very happy to find them. Punk was so sweet to me in the car. Um, they were out just, for three hours, which is a and, long time. And uh, apparently Punk did not leave Val's side, which was good. So he was just following after Val. But uh, I was I was concerned, but I would not say I was anxious. I was, uh, I was I anxious. Was re- I was I came back and made those tacos and was like, all right, um, I guess. We're down two dogs. He, he looked for them for hours and then came back. And I, found them. Yeah, I found them. I found them. He did. He did. I also <sighs> thought about how many times my... Also, like, dogs get out a lot. They do. I felt so embarrassed and shame, like, shameful of it. But, uh, you know, there's dogs missing on next door every day. And I remember as a kid, my dog getting out. You know, dogs just get out. I, I had a, a one dog, uh, Sadie. She got out all the time, and it would it felt like the end of the world. And I'd be sprinting down the street in like pajamas, barefooted, just screaming after her and like crying, you know, because you get scared. But she wasn't going out of the trailer park. She was just making a loop. <laughs> she yeah. was fine. Dogs are a fucking bitch, though. They're a lot of work. They no, are. Last dog never. He got out like one time famously, but he just like went up into the mountains and came back. But uh. 
he he was very well behaved. Primo tried to get out with the rest of the dogs, and he I think made it halfway up the hill. Jason <laughs> said, and then probably was like, mm, "This isn't really good for. I don't want to run around." <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's kind of just like, I'm going to go back home. I mean, the fear is that they won't come back, but it's also like if they don't come back and they're not dead, then maybe they never wanted to be with you in the first place. That was kind of my thinking. I was like, Val might be happier running through the canyon with a pack of coyotes. Yeah. Punk, he is very cute. I thought someone would steal Punk. Yeah, I thought he might get stolen and... You know, maybe he would get stolen by an Armenian family that had like a bunch of like fancy things for him to do. And he like, oh, he got, would be spoiled. Like, he would get like a lush like bed to chew up and destroy. Oh, that's cool. He could chew like Nike outlet sweatpants and stuff. He and does. Uh, he does he, chew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's very. He chews a lot. Yeah. Fuck dogs. Just kidding. I Ew. love. That is Jason, disgusting. stop. We already did a weird Udi humping episode oh, that I hated. Yeah, I know. I can't believe you're bringing that up again. Oh, my God. My next door app is still like giving me. I posted Advice. to you. Yeah, no, they're just still like. I thought that commenting. was funny that there were people just like being like, you should look for your dogs. And it's like, <laughs> oh, well, I am. Yeah. Have you tried treats? They're like, try posting on Facebook. Yeah, it's like, that Come was on. like the other thing. They were like, you should post about your and dogs. It's like, it's you like, realize this is you're, a post about you're giving dogs. us. Just suggestions on how to find dogs yeah. in the comment section where we're patiently waiting to hear about our dogs. People are idiots. It was funny to see all the Not pictures. Not as dumb as dogs, though, huh? <laughs> it was That's funny so to see all the pictures of our dogs running through the neighborhood that people were posting. They posted the actual pictures of them? Yeah, there was like, oh. the I like the one where they someone tried to put them behind their fence, uh, a neighbor's fence, and Valentine looks so happy. He's just like <laughs> smiling in the photo. They probably were happy. Yeah, they're oh my god. Probably the best just, time they'll ever have. They were just thrilled. Punk was happy. What's crazy because we moved out here to give them an acre of woods to run around they have in. So much space and it just made them want and more like, space. It's never enough. Oh, I can go beyond this. I wonder what the next Which is very instinctual. Like once you get to a certain level. And you establish that comfort. You want to see what's on the other side of the fence. Mm-hmm. That's a very human trait as well. That, and you know what? That actually leads into what we've been talking about with me doing real estate is, and I've said, don't let me want to buy other houses because I really want to Because you have no money. Because <laughs> I have no more money. Um, I, but I want to stay in this house. Link I to love- the Patreon below. I love this house so much, and I think this is a great area to raise the kids. Um, but I do, you know, how, this is the nicest house that we've had, right? Yeah. Like it's an upgraded size. Yeah, we have more property. I think the last house was nicer. You do? Yeah, but this one has way more charm. I get mm. okay. Well, the last house. I, w- I prefer this house by. I like the layout better. I like the size of it better. I like the yard better and location better. But I think nine out of 10 people would say the last house was nicer. I think the last house and, you know, maybe this is a ploy for me to let you let for you to let me do this. But the last house, when you saw it, it was after seven years of my renovation, my DIY renovations. and do you know what DIY stands for? Do it <clears throat> yourself with a hired staff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, so it was like seven years of me tinkering away at room by room. And, you no, know, I this mean, house, we've also, only been in less than a year. So I do have a lot of plans for this house to then become the nicest house. <laughs> but we have like, what, well, nice 800 extra a, square feet here. Nice is just a, you know... It's, it's objective, you know? You mean like fancy? They were like nice tiles well, in no, the other house. Well, no, it's just like one of those and, things. It's um, like, it was you know. a cute Highland Park house. And one of the things, and this goes into your real estate stuff, but one of the things we realized when we were looking for this house is that any house that had any like nod to mid-century was going to get with the LA market, Mm -hmm. these hipsters from Eagle Rock and Highland Park and Silver Lake looking to buy their first home are gonna spend 1 million extra dollars if there is a 
cute exposed beam in the house. Right. And so if and there's like, even if you put an Eames chair in a shithole, they're just like, yep, yep I'll buy it. That, that's it. And so 1. I think 4. at the last house, although it was smaller, the layout was very confusing. Um, there was no yard. Uh, there and, was a giant yard in LA standard. Um, anyways, it, and you know, I don't prefer that location. I think most people going into that house would be like, it's a very nice house. It yes. is a very nice house. I love so that when house. I, when but, I bought that house. But that's also why we're able to rent it out. And right. When I bought that house. I think we would have a much harder time renting this house. Agree. When I bought that house, it had, it, it's a mid century itself. Real estate pod. And it it's had good. been flipped already and i spent seven years on doing the flip putting the mid-century back into it the house that you're sitting in right now is a 1951 mid-century sprawling ranch famous in california um it's an incredible home also has been flipped if you look above you the the exposed beam is right there and has been painted over white this wood paneling has all been painted over and i think that it is a it is so upsetting that that happens to these old historical homes, especially since California is famous for them. But um, that's why I'm, I, I would like, I'm starting to turn back the clock a little bit on this house. The fireplace is next, fix it, putting the kitchen, the flat slab doors back on. Cause someone put fucking shaker doors on it, which is insane. Um, anyways, that's my, I have a lot of, but I did that at the other house too. You know, it, it had been, uh, the other house was flipped in a way that it was like, it almost looked like, um, what's a casino I like that in, in, uh, Vegas. What's that casino that I like to stay at and gamble at? The wind? No, I like to stay at the wind, but what's the next one? Venetian. It looks the, the house that I, uh, that we moved here from someone had flipped it put renaissance paintings everywhere it was like basically like the all the cabinets had like um gold foil accent oh, wow. and um they were also they were cathedral cabinets uh and uh actually i noticed there were some cathedral cabinets on the sopranos that we're watching um which in that home it made sense 90s cathedral uh cabinet shape but we have shaker doors i think shaker doors can be a plague um i think people think that it's it's very like modern farmhouse would you be doing this if it was like a colonial house or something? Or you just really like mid-century stuff? So I could do a colonial house in, in I, I like the history of homes mm -hmm. where I'm from. And I've, I've kind of like been, in, I've been, been investigating this as I'm like jumping into this new career. Like what is my driving force here? But where I'm from, there aren't really houses that are older than 10, 15 years because we live where hurricanes are and things get demolished all the time and everything is new construction. Um, it, that's like anybody down in Florida, like will tell you this. In fact, old Florida style homes are the, that is a architecture style that people like try to find down there. That is the mid century. California specifically is where all these like mid century architects lived and built track housing all the way to like signature homes. And there, and if you think of like how artworks or fashion or anything, it's like you have these architects that are like building that, you know, what's now a $10 million, like John Lautner, you know, in Hollywood Hills. And then everybody coming into architecture is looking at that, but then making it up a pedestrian level of it. Right. So the, our last houses were pedestrian level mid centuries. They're called mid century modests. Um, and, you know, cause obviously there's a difference between a, a modern home and, you know, just what's coming out in the mid century, which is like 1930s through 1970s. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, uh, what were you, oh, yeah, would I do, uh, like, yeah, I have interest in all the architecture. It's very fun to do the mid century stuff because it's, I know so much about it at this point and it's like what this area was known for for a long time and watching it get flipped because people are like, Oh, like I bet you there, like, I remember it was actually, we talk about two tone so much, but whatever. Um, but I remember when two tone came over or, and he was, and you were talking about putting the, the, um, what were we joking about with the furniture? 
I have no idea what you're talking about. You were talking about so, we wanted to make another level, and you were going to put like a brutal oh, brutalist brutalist or whatever. And I remember, and a really like fulfilling thing for me was like two tone was like you're going to put brutalist architecture on top of your ranch home and i was like oh my god he knows it's a ranch because like i think a lot of people would drive past this house and they go oh that's just a house but like there are people who know about the architecture of the area and they're like that's a mid-century sprawling ranch and that makes me feel very happy and i think like preserving that and turning it back like we have linoleum on our floors right now and people i think would be like why are you putting linoleum in your home but this is like the this is what's supposed to be in this home Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so it just i don't know putting that stuff back has been really fun and I find a lot of interest in it. Sorry, I'm on a fucking. No, no. Southern California has like the main heritage, I think, is all the mid-century stuff. Because like yeah. I, in Massachusetts, we have houses from like the 1700s. Yeah. Here, it seems like the clock pretty much starts at like 1940s, 1930s. But especially like 50s and 60s with like yeah. the diners, the Quentin Tarantino, like Pulp Fiction style diners and stuff other than that it's just like missions and like really old ranch houses well because the missions that was also a big part of california like the spanish homes out here yeah um which is also i find a lot of interest in that too i don't want to live in one because the terracotta roof shingles trigger me (laughs) you don't like terracotta roof shingles i like them on the house but i I, and like i could do i could definitely do there's terracotta over there yeah (laughs) i could definitely do that but um the house that i was abandoned in had terracotta roof shingles and so I told Jason I couldn't he found a this is just a joke for Jason but when we were shopping for homes there was a really nice one that we both liked but I couldn't get over the I said I didn't want to pull up to it every day and see the roof no, like, it was we were discussing what our needs and wants for a house were, and I was like well enough space for us to grow a family in it you know have kids uh, we don't it needs to be in good enough shape that we can like move in and you know we have busy lives and i was like what are yours and you're like no terracotta shingles oh yeah the, just the roof can't be orange i do not care about anything else as long as the shingles are not orange i was like yeah i was in a frantic state for when we were home shopping but also we were not home shopping in at a time where there was no stress like we were we needed immediately yeah, the to house move. was flooding right? the house was flooded and we hadn't fixed it yet and we needed more space and it was just like everything all at once um and so and i was pregnant we were like we gotta we can't do this in that house so we were figuring it out but um yeah no i absolutely would love to do spanish homes that are i, I like the history of homes that that are specific to the area yeah you, you seem know? to be a preservationist mm. Yeah, something. I don't know. It's not like I don't think everything needs to be like, you know, back to the linoleum floors. This is not like under here. There's that gray LVP plank that, you know, everybody puts in under there. There was cork tiles. I guess if I was a preservationist, I'd want somebody to go down there for x amount of dollar you know so expensive and get all of this new stuff out and get to the cork tiles Mm -hmm. and fix them you know but i was happy especially budget restrictive you know putting in new linoleum soft edge preservationist yeah soft edge preservationist not extreme not yeah. hardcore yeah how does it, jason how does all this make you feel is this like a, you like your art like arts and designers is this like a turn yeah, on I like, this new f- I, I like houses um i don't care as much uh <laughs> I love you your impressed? passion. Yeah, are you impressed by this fa- newfound passion, or it, the, I don't think this is newfound at all. That I mean, that was, and we talked about it on another podcast. But that was when we we're looking for homes. I was like, why don't you get into real estate because mm-hmm. you love us so much. Um, you get so excited. You just talked for I think the last twenty minutes without <laughs> taking a breath, and Oops. that's like no. I mean, that's a good thing to have passion like that. I'm not pass- passionate about. Of course, I think houses are cool, but I like I am of the ilk that it's like, oh, floor is a floor. If I can, if I have unlimited budget and unlimited time, then, yeah, I'll I'll make a house like the perfect mid-century masterpiece that I want. But uh, without that time, I, I can get by with anything because I've slept in less desirable places. Um, yeah, my main thing is just, uh, the light. Yeah. I like light. I like a bright house. I don't want to live in a dungeon. 
I think that's another thing that people don't do well in flips and renovations and stuff. They don't consider just bringing the light in from outside. I think they do out here a lot. It's better out here for sure. Yeah, this area is interesting though. because like that walk we take, mm -hmm. there's like the cement houses that have no windows at all next to like mid-century beautiful like open floor plan ones and everything's just kind of pieced together. I Back to the dogs, they went up through the canyon last night and mm -hmm went to the ridge line and they were on this like back road that was nothing but these amazing mid-century homes that were overlooking the canyon and the first person who found them i got punk and when i was putting him in the truck Val took off and ran and disappeared for another hour and i had to go back out and find him and he was at another beautiful mid-century home on the same street. Val and I share the same interests. Well, we're good taste. Yeah, he's nice. he's bougie. He's a wild man, but he's a little bougie. Mm -hmm. Just like him. Well, just, it's just oh, I think I think everyone just like Jason. Oh, wow, look, look at that. Yeah, and his like nice fancy sweater and his pants. Yeah. Should we cut? Yeah, All we right. got it. Oh, okay. you got more? No, I mean that's an odd cut. Well, you yeah. just kept looking down, so I thought maybe we were. Oh, I'm just—that's just my job. Okay, sorry. Let's keep going. No, no, we can. Oh, okay. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Once again, I wanted more for you, but we'll end on that note. There I am a man of the people. So. Just remember, I am a man of the people. I am fighting for you. <laughs> Cut.